sort of like, what do I want my daily routine to look like? Because ultimately a relationship, however one structures it, is going to be part of your daily routine. So at the point where you're like, you know, I'd really love to wake up next to somebody and do blank and blank together. And then I'd love to, you know, in some cultures, men and women will only touch for two weeks out of the month. And then for the other two weeks, the excitement and the sensuality and all and the sexuality is very heightened and then they go back to this kind of distancing now i don't think that's feasible for most people but if you look statistically those relationships tend to last a very long time with re at least reported mutual feelings of intense attraction for many 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 decades so human beings need to learn how to at least understand and control these dynamics. And there's a lot of divorce, there's a lot of cheating, there's a lot of stuff out there. It'd be great if people could resolve some of this stuff inside of the relationship, in my opinion. Careful, you know, I get a lot of questions from God. You have to be careful of the questions you ask in a relationship too. You have to make sure you really want that information. And it's not just about people's past, right? If you ask somebody how they really feel about something about you and they tell you, that may be soothing, it may be intensely stressful. You have to be, here's one thing I know for sure, for a relationship to work, you have to be brave. You can't go in there fully protected. And yet you also can't go in there with no boundaries because you'll end up beat up. What's that quote? If you want to be a warrior, prepare to get hurt. If you want to be an explorer, prepare to get lost. And if you want to be both, you know, uh, if, and if you become a lover, prepare to beat both or something, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I forget. Yeah. Where, this is one of these Instagram type things that you see <laughs> passing by and you go, oh, that's pretty true. Love, love's scary because it takes us back to that primitive circuitry that is as primitive and basic as hunger, thirst, the desire for heat when we're cold, the desire for cold when we're overly uh, warm. It's a, it's dynorphin. I mean, when somebody leaves, like the, you know, when somebody you were attached to leaves by death or by decision, or you're forced apart, the dynorphin release is massive. It is true discomfort. People feel anxiety and discomfort. Uh, why Alexa's single response? Why any advice? Yeah, actually, this comes from a friend of mine who's in a really excellent marriage um, with great kids and family and high demand life. It, it's a decision. Like at some point you just, prioritize, you just prioritize it as, okay, I'm going to make this happen one way or another. And um, you don't force the discovery of that person. But I mean, I've occasionally said, hey, I think you should meet this person or that person. And um well, it wasn't maybe my judgment was might have been off, but it, the timing wasn't right or something. But I think that, yeah, you, it's a decision and it also has to do with life structure. I mean, there were years. So I, when I was in graduate school, I, I didn't want a girlfriend. I just wanted to be in lab and I sure I had romantic dating interests, but I wasn't going to meet them through a committed, you know, live together situation. It wasn't where I was at with, you know, when you first meet someone and you're attracted to them, you're essentially objectifying them you meaning not in the, the way people might think you are not dependent on them for emotional stability or survival as you get close to somebody you really come to depend on them and then you tend to objectify them less and so this book the book is the name is kind of corny but the book, it's written by an analyst again it's called can love last and it's a book about how really good strong relationships are the consequence of people constantly moving through this um dependency objectification dynamic and I use those words in the true, sort of like, what do I want my daily routine to look like? Because ultimately a relationship, however one structures it, is gonna be part of your daily routine. So at the point where you're like, you know, I'd really love to wake up next to somebody and do blank and blank together. And then I'd love to work and then we meet for dinner and then we, you know, take the dog for a walk or take kids out or whatever it happens to be, take a trip and do it. You have to be, one has to be in the mindset of wanting to do couple-like things, yeah. people. And a lot of people don't think about it that way. They they either fall into something or they, they don't see the benefits of coupling up. I think that the pandemic um, tuned people's awareness to the fact that some things are indeed easier on your own. Depends on finances, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of things are made better done with other people.